Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest Credit Safe webinar. I couldn't be more excited today to bring to you this conversation around automated decisions. Um, and our speaker, Leighton Weston, is somebody I've worked with for quite a while here at Credit Safe, and somebody who um, I've, I've really enjoyed it, and I learned a lot. I've learned a lot from over the past couple of years. He's been with Credit Safe for 12 years. Um, and if you're looking for any information around how to kind of really leverage credit safe products and tools and services and get the most out of them, I go to Leighton almost first and foremost. So he's a, he's a really great resource. Couldn't be more excited to have him on the, on the webinar today talking about really how do you, you make smarter decisions with credit safe data. With that said, I also want to mention that we will be taking Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, please use the Q&A option at the bottom. He's got a short presentation, shouldn't be much more over 10 minutes or so. So, you know, at the end, we definitely will have time for questions. And, and with that said, Leighton, I want to turn this over to you and, and really welcome you to your first Credit Safe webinar. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dustin. Really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everybody for their time that they've taken out of their schedules today. Uh, my main objective today is to give some very basic insights into uh, how autonomous decisions can help in your business and talk about some of the things that you can leverage within your business to make things more effective. So what I'll cover today uh, is why automation, uh, what benefits does it give? Then I'm going to move straight into how how do you get started? What elements should you be looking at within your business uh, in order to create an autonomous environment? Quickly move into a case study uh, of some very basic things that you can do just to improve productivity. Then talk a little bit about automation opportunities. How do you identify those opportunities and how you can move forward in creating a better environment? Number five, I uh, want to talk about a credit policy. What items should you be considering in your credit policy and just giving a very basic overview of that. Uh, then I've got a little slide that I'm going to talk about lowering that decision time. Uh, you know, how long is it taking to gather the information necessary to make decisions? And then finish off with another small case study uh, of a recent project I've just finished uh, where a company created uh, autonomous decision making within their credit program. So why automation? Automation uh, is simply there to save time and in essence save money and build a better business process. I will go through some other key benefits to creating an autonomous environment through this. Uh, I suppose we should just get started. So when you're looking at creating an autonomous process, uh, you've got to identify the opportunities. Uh, some of the key things that I would say, where can I save time and money, is a, is a very simple one to use. But how many reviews are your staff currently making and how long are they taking to make those decisions and process the sales? Um, how many touches are my collections people making to our customers? Then move on to creating or amending a credit policy, uh, looking at some key items within uh, a credit policy. You know, how do we deal with companies in different countries? What are the different laws across there? And how do we define our accounts by priority? Is it by size? Is it by margin? How do you create um, those rules within your business? Then you need to look at what systems am I currently using? What software am I currently leveraging? And what data suppliers am I currently using? Are they compatible? And can this environment be created? Now, one thing I wouldn't recommend doing is just trying to turn something on today and say this is autonomous um, because mistakes will get made. Um, from experience, you just need to take a look, take your time, uh, make sure you're testing the decisions that are being made, testing these business processes, and use simple benchmarking, uh, looking at historic decisions that would have been made. And the one thing I can say more than anything is start simple, um, and then you'll whet your appetite for it and create more uh, within the business. So the case study uh, I'm going to bring to you is a uh, project that we've just finished. Uh, their old process consisted of making a thousand manual reviews a month. Uh, this is both on existing customers and on new customers. Uh, we had 10 staff reviewing these manually. Now the average order value for this company was only between $500 and $2,000. Uh, 
And 99% of the time, uh, these decisions were just placed as a yes anyway. Um, so a very easy uh, example. Uh, now, when we took a look at those thousand decisions that were being made, we identified some key things straight away which could create an autonomous decision. Uh, we found that credit scores that were very low risk, um, then we made sure that there was enough trade lines within that credit report so we weren't looking at thin trade files. Uh, and then we also looked at negative data as well. So in any circumstance, if somebody would manually look at it, it was definitely going to be a yes. So we managed to identify that 50% of those decisions could be made automatically, saving a lot of time, money, and resources. The end result of this was a company could then move staff on to new roles. Um, and then also uh, the benefit that was given uh, was that more touches were being made on collections as well, because they had more staff available uh, in order to complete that process. So developing an automation process, I'm going to talk a lot about the, uh, the benefits of creating something autonomous and the key things you should look at uh, in areas of your business where improvements can be made. So reducing the time and cost of an approval process, how long does your decision currently take? Um, you know, how much does this process currently cost you, not just in physical dollar values, but in actual labor and time spent on your, by your staff? So there can be some hidden um, benefits here. Uh, not only are you creating something that's autonomous, saving time and money, but that moves you straight into the second point here, which is improving customer journey and experience. Now, in, in a recent study, we found that a client was losing customers because decisions were taking two or three days. Uh, once that aut uh, autonomy was created, the credit decisions were being made instantly. So they had a long-standing customer um, that was coming for product. They'd never paid a bill late with them. Their credit report was also stellar and that they could create that and make that decision immediately, creating a very happy customer compared to a two or three day wait time before. Now the last two um, subjects on this I'd like to merge into one uh, because you shouldn't just be looking at this on the negative standpoint, seeing which customers that I should not do business with but you should also be taking a look at this as far as an opportunity is concerned as well. Um, increasing the accuracy and optimizing risk. Let's take a look at who our best customers are and how we can interact with them more successfully. So now I move on to the credit policy section. Um, these are just some very basic points. You can obviously get very complex with a credit policy. But looking at historic internal data is very important. Uh, one thing that I come across regularly is I've been dealing with this customer for 10 years. We make fantastic margins. We've got a great relationship. It doesn't even matter what it says on a credit report. We're still going to work with this business. Well, then write that in your credit policy. Make it a rule. Um, if we've never had a default with this company and we make good margins and we're doing good business, then create that as your autonomous decision. Then you're looking at external data, um, whether that's from a credit bureau or you're peeling in other external data items. Take a look at the negative and the positive to create a better decision-making process for you. Now, benchmarking, uh, very important. You take a look at the decisions that would have been made uh, against the decisions that are now being made. Is this actually creating a benefit and a better environment for my business case? Uh, if you're looking at my decisions being made faster and I'm making more accurate decisions, it's driving my DSO down, yes, I'm going to make this change. Authorization, uh, quite simply, who makes the decisions? Who makes a $500 decision? Who makes a million dollar decision? This is something to take very seriously within a credit policy to make sure um, that you're creating a standardized environment. Now, moving on to specifically decision time. Uh, so a lot of the times we have companies, uh, for example, in the USA, 94% of our customers still uh, use our web-based service. Um, so you go to our website, you pop in a username and a password. Uh, then you search a company, you pull the company report and you gather all of that information. Uh, now that can take some time, as well as having other things, maybe going into your uh, invoicing system and seeing what your history is with this company manually. That entire process and that essential data entry can be autonomous quite simply. 
Uh, I like to compare it to um, our Scandinavian customers where 72% of our Scandinavian customers already have data delivered directly into their software systems. So just by putting all of this information in one place, it's gonna save you time and save you money. Now what I want to end up on uh, is just a recent example of a uh, brand new credit policy that was just created. So this is just taking a very simple format of a very good potential customer and creating that yes automatically. We want to work with this company, they're brilliant. Uh, so we just took a fantastic credit score of 60 or above. Uh, the benchmark that I always recommend using, uh, making sure that the credit report has enough information in it, at least look for X amount of trade lines. Uh, they've never had a default with your company before, and there's no negative data, no liens, no suits, no judgments, no bankruptcies. And then it also goes to the uh, credit limit to make sure the credit they're requesting is equal or less than the credit limit being shown on the credit report. And this just created uh, very good customers being accepted instantly and you beginning that relationship quicker. And it took a little bit less time than when I practiced, um, but I really uh, thank everyone for their time today. And uh, I'd love to open up to any of the questions that we've received. Yes, Leighton, thank you so much. So this is Dustin, uh, Dustin Luther coming back in and just wanted to say that the questions, if you have a little Q&A, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, I believe. If you um, have anything, please throw it in there. I have a question of my own. Um, one of the questions that, that I was kind of curious is if you can explain just a little bit around the impact that you're seeing, how are you seeing companies change their credit policies or their autonomous decision making based on kind of the impact from COVID-19 uh, on their businesses? So what, what kind of changes are you seeing? So COVID-19, um, I mean, we've got the COVID-19 uh, impact analysis that we're doing at the moment and I'm finding a lot of companies um, you know, we'll, we'll take one, for example, where we're taking their customer base and we are looking at the uh, states specifically and we're looking at the industry codes within specific states. And not only are they looking at cash collection and what areas they should be trying to um, chase their customers. Um, one company even turned around and they said, well, look, we've got a team of salespeople uh, that are in need of something to do. <laughs> So we gave them the areas that were least impacted by uh, the pandemic. And then we also uh, merged that in with low risk credit scores so that their sales teams for the next couple of weeks or so are going to be targeting um, companies that are open, um, one, and that are credit worthy. Very, very cool. We actually got some questions coming in here now. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the, the Q&A here. Um, yep. Angie asks, what are the most frequent benchmarking metric uh, that, that credit safe for your customers use to determine financial stability? Um, so that's very um, loaded question, but a very good. Uh, it depends how, how complex the company is that we're working with. Um, on a very simple scale, um, you would just answer that by saying the credit score. Uh, some companies have complex scoring models where they like to take a look at financial statements and take a look at the historics of those financial statements. And then you look at your internal history with that company as well. Um, so leveraging credit scores and payment data. Because uh, one thing that I always like to remind people is that, you know, the credit safe credit scores are very generic. They're designed for everybody to use. Um, so when we get a bit more in detail and we're benchmarking that against your internal payment data and your internal experience with companies, you're going to come up with something uh, more accurate. I think that's like really key what you're saying there. Yes, exactly. That kind of using just a mixture of what's really appropriate for their company. It, it makes so much sense. <laughs> it's somewhat intuitive, yeah. but it's also super important. Um, we also have a question from Tim. He's asking, API connection to Salesforce ERP systems or collection software, can you just kind of explain that process? Yes. Uh, so CreditSafe has done a lot of work in the last 10 years to make sure um, that our data is available in as many services as possible. Um, so essentially, uh, CreditSafe has an API connector that's going to deliver data there. The work we've done in the background is we've pre-built a lot of those connectors, um, specifically within uh, salesforce.com. Uh, what we've done is rather than create uh, an external environment to Salesforce, we've created something in the natural environment of Salesforce. So all we're actually doing is delivering the data. 
and then you can use the natural workflow solutions in Salesforce to create that autonomy within your business, keeping you in complete control. Um, one thing I will say uh, is me and Dustin are working with, uh, with a case study right now where we've created uh, this process with a client. They're gonna be doing a case study and we're gonna be following up with a webinar specifically on salesforce.com in the next few weeks. I'm very excited about that. We, they've seen some early video we done and with that and stuff. It's, it's really a, it's the people that we've talked to have been very impressed with just how seamless it is. And it's something that Leighton and I have talked about. It's I, as a marketer, I talk about it all the time. Like I'm more interested in integrations these days than features. Uh, it's just so important of how well do you just kind of integrate with my existing process. So I love that this just, as you mentioned, it just slips right into Salesforce. The data is in there. You're just able to really use Salesforce processes. That's just is so, so darn helpful. So very, very cool. Um, I wanted to just follow it up by saying as well, um, if any of the, our customers are, are listening to this, please talk to your account manager. They can help set this up for you. And if there's uh, anyone else who's coming in and going, I'd like to just understand if this really can be applicable to my business, we want to be as helpful as possible here at Credit Safe. And especially with the impact of COVID-19 on so many businesses, we've changed our trial uh, policies around and are genuinely just opening it up to any business can get access to credit reports um, for free. You get 30 day access. We have a stay safe program, we're calling it. So if you are new to Credit Safe and are just curious about this, how do you get involved? We genuinely want to help and the way we're doing it is through the Stay Safe program. Just go to creditsafe.com slash US and you'll see a banner at the top of the site there that will take you into our Stay Safe program. As I say, it's free, it's a simple form. We're not looking to do anything other than, than genuinely just, just be as helpful as possible to help get companies to you know, build up trust again in the companies that they're working with, have a better understanding of who's available to, uh, to really work with them. So that, um, that would end it. I don't see any more questions in here. Leighton, I want to really say thank you so much. This is a great presentation. It's, a, it's wonderful that you were able to, you know, put this together and, and really help out both our customers and, and non-customers alike with this. So thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, Dustin. And thank you everyone for their time. <laughs> thank you much.